other thing that I want to mention is I've been doing the videos a little out of order. There's been a lot of stuff happening with Anthem lately in the beta software updates and, and such. So I wanted to get those out right away while they were very topical because the big update came to the Anthem products just this past week where they added the auto distance, auto delay, shouldn't say distance now, we should say delay, delay measurements and subwoofer phase integration. I wanted to get that out, make that and get that out right away after going through the process and kind of helping folks check it out. I still haven't done a whole lot of demoing, but right now in the room I have the Arundel subs set up and uh, I did one cal for the Arundels. I haven't done the cal for the Har bottle yet. I'm going to do that one real, real soon because I need to put more kind of listening time on the Har bottle and the new changes that are coming with there that came with the software upgrade kind of relieve some of the calibration issues that Anthem was causing me while trying to integrate the Har bottle. So I'm super excited to try that out. But I did want I did get one little demo in yesterday. We had a whole bunch of family over for a, a, a family event. I brought my dad, uh, some of my uncles uh, and cousins uh, in the room. So everybody, I was standing in the back actually, standing up behind the couch and everybody else was, was sitting on the couch and we did the full Ready Player One racing demo from start to finish. I, I cranked it up to about minus 20, minus 20 dB on the Anthem, which doesn't sound loud, but I think as I've commented in the past, I found that I'm turning the Anthem up uh, less. I used to listen on the Marantz at like minus nine, minus eight, minus 10 dB but I find myself in the minus 20 range. That was still louder too than we would probably certainly do a family movie. I cranked it up for the impactfulness of the demo. And that was the first time that I heard anything in there or I even played anything since running the new, uh, running a full Anthem Arc calibration with the new software. And again, with the delay integration and the phase integration. And so I was nowhere, in by no means a good place in the room. I was standing behind the couch, real close to the one side surround standing up so you know obviously my head was a lot taller than it would be than if I was sitting down on the couch and I found myself as the scene was playing and again it's a scene that I'm becoming very acquainted with as I've watched it over and over and over again as my my demo snippet my my kind of go-to demo reel because it has so much stuff going on it really hits the base it hits surrounds it hits atmos there's there's highs there's lows and, and so I understand why I think people use that scene for a lot of testing purposes and reviewing purposes and such it makes a lot of sense but in any case i'm standing back there we're playing this scene and i found myself thinking like wow I, like i hear once again i feel like i hear something more something better it's it's hard to characterize and i don't want to totally be a victim of like self-fulfilling prophecy or or whatever meaning like all this new stuff came out and it's supposed to sound better so oh wow it like it magically does and I understand the, the fallacy of trying to say, like, I listened to this scene days ago or whatever with, with setting, you know, with these settings. And then now several days later, I'm listening to the scene again. Do I really have that type of acoustic memory? Does anybody really have that type of acoustic memory? Well, maybe if you've been like a 20 year, you know, reviewer in the AV space and, and you've really got yourself trained. I certainly don't. But in any case, I found myself standing back there, at least thinking that this sounds really, really darn good. And I, I think there were a couple moments where I kind of I heard heard something or heard a little more detail that that just was like better or, or more noticeable than it was in the prior calibrations and particularly the subwoofer behavior. It just felt so much more integrated. I, I don't know, maybe that that's a good word, but more more yeah more integrated. And one of the things that I'd also did with that cal that I was tinkering with is I had been moving up or trying to add some more bass to the Anthem target curves by, by uh, adding to the deep bass boost. And I, I thought that still sounded okay to me. There was a lot of feedback to my videos, both in, in some video comments and some discussion in the Anthem Facebook users group, like, oh, stay off the deep bass boost. Instead, you should use the room gain setting. And so that's what I did in this calibration. I added 3 dB of room gain and did my normal fully calibrate out to 20k uh, for reasons that I've commented on in other videos and my little minus one dB tilt uh, in, into the high frequencies and wow it wow it was it was very good uh, and again I'll say I think I, I made the comment a couple times but I can't imagine like why would I even want to buy a mini DSP add extra processing spend more hours just you know trying to take what what am i going to get out of that i think this thing works so well it works 
so good and you can get that with you know um, a fairly accessible amount of, of effort um, you still need some technical expertise and some knowledge and such about what you're doing but it's it's like accessible performance and I would be more afraid of doing damage to what like the anthem is is doing if I added uh, something in between but my system's not that complex I know you got folks with like a half a dozen subwoofers and these bass shakers and all this other kind of stuff and those things have to be integrated and and so I kind of like it's all a matter of scope and I think that's something I might talk about in some more dedicated content coming up is like just how much stuff do you need right before you're at like the 90 95 percent of the capability of your room or 98 percent of the performance that you can get and what do you how much time are you putting in how much money are you spending to get 1%, 2%, 5%? Or in some cases, are you actually even overdoing it, right? And kind of kind of even degrading. So I don't know, but I'm, I'm enamored. I'm getting everything out of this Anthem processor that I wanted out of this Anthem processor for the money that I spent on it and upgrading from the Marantz and so on. So next up, um, actually shortly after directly filming this video, I'll be up in the living room putting in the Focal 1000 IWLCR speakers. Uh, excited to do that and then figuring out what my, my, my processing future after that is going to be in the living room. So I'm going to shut this, blog, this vlog down now. Um, I am going to try and keep the vlogs a little shorter. Try to. Some, some topics might still go longer. Like I am going to record the installation of those speakers and that might be a bit of a longer form video. Tell me what you want to see. So sound off in the comments. You know what what, what length, what frequency, and such. Um, I don't want to make too much stuff that the, the channel audience is kind of like overwhelmed, but I'm, I'm having fun doing this, and I'm, I'm getting generally good feedback about it, and I want to keep it going, and I don't want to inundate folks with, with too much to watch. So if you have an opinion about a, a good length or a good target, again, let me know. Positive feedback, please. Constructive feedback, and I'll take that into consideration for future videos. But for now, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please like, absolutely subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. All that stuff helps so much for, uh, for a YouTuber, especially on the small channels like mine trying to grow. Take a look down in the description for some more direct ways to support the channel. And thanks so much for watching.